Senhor. Relax now and enjoy 60 minutes of over-the-shoulder action as Bob McGuire joins Bob Fulcrod on a fair chase trophy caribou hunt in the remote wilderness of northern Quebec. We now join Bob McGuire, filming over the shoulder of bow hunter Bob Folkrod. Many bulls, even record book qualifiers, were passed over by Folkrod and McGuire. Throughout the filming, you may occasionally hear apparent loud noises. They come from McGuire's telephoto lens zooming and gloves scuffing directly against the sensitive microphone located on the camera. Let me get a view. Um... These noises are actually quite soft and not detectable to the caribou. Move to the right. Oh, well. Too small. That one is too small. Folkrod had heard bulls grunt as they walked nearby and had discovered that it was sometimes possible to call caribou by imitating the bull vocalizations. Similar to the white-tailed tending grunt, it may have made a difference here since the previous caribou had taken a new path and later animals tend to follow the exact trail of those just ahead of them.
set up next to a red-hot trail along the caribou migration, these hunters were very selective in the trophies they would shoot. The weather throughout this hunt would vary instantly and dramatically, perhaps several times daily. Sunshine, then snow, accompanied by perhaps a 30 degree temperature drop. The only sure thing was constantly changing weather. After several hours, cloud cover and cooler temperatures had now forced Folk Rod to put on his jacket. McGuire was now set up and filming from directly in the main caribou trail. A single nice bull had been spotted making his way up the trail and the hunters had scrambled to their new positions. The actual kill shot is slowed down at the instant of arrow release. Veteran bow hunters are extremely careful of first shot arrow placement, but following a hit, any reasonable second shot should be attempted. Did he get him? Both shots had connected as Folkrod immediately examined the ground sign. Several minutes later, Folkrod and McGuire followed the blood trail down off the bluff back toward the river. Stopping at their boat, Folkrod had grabbed additional arrows and loaded his quiver. Having killed many caribou, Folkrod instinctively walked away from the blood trail in order to check along the river bank. This filming documents the exact events as they happened. Nothing was recreated or reenacted. Looking far upriver, Folkrod did not initially spot the downed caribou until it bounded away in a final death run.
This little caribou was probably on the scent trail of the arrowed bull. Having seen the big bull pile up, the hunters walked directly over to Folk Rod's trophy. All of this filming was done near the Quebec Labrador border north of Shefferville, Quebec, near Ungava Bay, in the principal winter range of the world's largest caribou herd. This hunt had started several days earlier, when McGuire had boarded an otter float plane at Air Shefferville Bush Flying Service. Generally classified as the George River caribou herd, these caribou presently number well over half a million animals, with a population expected to surpass one million by the year 1990. After two hours of looking down at sparse vegetation, the lush river valley suddenly appeared. It was no wonder that the caribou were attracted to this location. First a quick circle, and then the bush pilot dropped the lumbering aircraft gently and precisely onto the fast current. Departing hunters prepared to load up their antlers, meat, and personal gear on the same plane after McGuire's equipment was unloaded. Caribou meat is highly prized, and the hunters had plenty. Two trophies apiece, as the bag limit for Quebec Labrador caribou has been permanently raised from a single animal due to the phenomenal growth of this herd. After meeting with his friend, Bob Folkrod, who was already in camp, McGuire loaded his cameras into a waiting canoe and the pair headed out to where guides had previously located a major migration. What's the story? This was McGuire's first experience with Folk Rod, and there was a normal amount of coordination and communication problems until the two bow hunters got accustomed to working together. As world record holder in this species, Folk Rod had considerable experience watching caribou. McGuire, on the other hand, had never before seen a caribou in the wild. Take one. 
Maguire's whispered directions fell upon deaf ears. Folkrod knew better. The real trophy in this group was not positioned for a good shot. Carefully selecting the single best trophy, Folkrod prepared to cast his arrow. Again, a poor shooting opportunity. All McGuire could see was the tremendous mass of antlers sprouting out, filling his video camera viewfinder. Finally, it all seemed to come together, and Fulkrod stood to draw. As often happens, a single animal signaled alarm and sent the entire group crashing away. This island was a stopover point as the migration crossed the river. The two hunters shared the load equally, with McGuire carrying the camera pack and Folkrod carrying the bows and the day pack. Soon, they even reversed roles with Folkrod filming McGuire's hunt. Folkrod had now grabbed the camera and handed a bow to McGuire. That one right there. The two bobs were now joined together with no. Folkrod stretching the camera cable at full length from McGuire's recorder pack. Yep. The first arrow was dead on target until the big bull raced away from it. The second arrow, held well in front of the caribou, seemed to float forever until it arrived at an exact spot behind the shoulder. Oh, good shot. Good shot. Still, don't push him. Give me the camera, easy. McGuire had taken the camera back and was once again filming. I led that bow six feet, Bob. I swear. Oh. Fokrat?
coming after you shot yours in the water. It isn't as big as mine, is it? Holy jeez. Fuck them, God. I'm going to say about 400. Hey. I heard it's still in. Yeah, it's right in the shoulder blade. He's going down. There he goes. McGuire's first caribou was down for the count. <laughs> Shake my hand. <laughs> That's why we do these low budget videos. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> I guess not. He doesn't have very much point. Very many points. Can you find the blood trail? Hey, holy buckets! You got points all the way up through here. Lots of all these are counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Nice shovel. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, four, five, six, twenty-seven, twenty-seven points. Both, both your points are there. How long is it going? 46 inches? I don't know, but that rack's longer than that. 50, 52 inches? God. They call this a night, partner. <laughs> <laughs> but he's booked, for sure. And he's here. And he's, oh, definitely. No, I wouldn't let you shoot nothing but a book here. <laughs> well, you said that, but you never know. I took the caribou the first morning out. Man, we ran and ran and ran. That's it, we're working. <laughs>
I thought it was the uh, sound of the hoofs on the rocks, the rock clattering. But I, I can see where that could make noise. Yeah, just, and it keeps them wore down. Something else that's interesting to me, we watched all the scent trailing, and inside this, just skin it out on both sides, there's a gland that they call the interdigital gland, and it leaves a ground scent that the caribou use to follow each other. It's very deep inside there. There it is. How big is the last bull in that group? Right across there, Bob. Just a little bull. Just same shook off? Yep, same as the rest of them. One's pissing. Just for it swims. Now it's drinking its piss. <laughs> Oh, I 
All through the hunt, there was time for work, time for shooting, and it seemed like always plenty of time for fun. This day found Fulgrad on camera filming McGuire. The two bow hunters had spent enough time afield by now that they were definitely getting their act coordinated. Even in slow motion, it is difficult to see the arrow as it passes through the perfect spot behind the shoulder. What you may think is an arrow flying down to the right is actually part of a rubber string silencer. Right after you shot, right after, after you just killed one, and you got animals coming out next to us. The movement's starting to get good again. Well, that acts as a decoy down there too, I bet, that live caribou. Look at how our attention's on the caribou instead of, is that a bull or a caribou I'm looking at? You got a bull up front, you got a cow in the back, the one with the dropped horn is a cow. Ah, 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 it stopped his others that time. Yeah, it's called Kerbal, Kerbal, Kerbal. See how he stopped when I called his name? We're on a first moon basis. Hey. Thornaby. Yeah. 
One of McGuire's best memories came from a giant bull caribou he filmed while returning to camp that afternoon. Folkrod had spotted the bull even before it entered the water far downriver. It would have been easy prey to these veteran caribou hunters simply by landing upriver and running to the location where the well-worn trail crossed up into the timber. Unfortunately, it would have been impossible to get the camera gear assembled in time to beat the bull to the ambush spot. Since McGuire had filled his final tag and Fulcrod already held the world record Quebec Labrador caribou, the hunters decided to hold the boat upriver long enough for McGuire to unpack his camera and this bull was filmed from the water. Folkrod's final tag would be saved for a caribou that could be killed, fair chase, under the camera. A definite wall hanger, this monster not only carried enormous antlers, but was considerably larger in body size than any other caribou filmed by McGuire. McGuire spent the following day filming alone and captured some classic scent trailing footage as he watched the migration from a high ridge. Just a few minutes earlier, guides had dropped another bow hunter, in addition to McGuire, along a high ridge at a major crossing. There were three good trails leading up over the bluff. McGuire was positioned with his camera along an end trail. The other bow hunter would watch for nice bulls and try to cover both of the other two trails.
You may notice the caribou smell the ground occasionally as they reference the interdigital scent deposited from the foot glands of earlier caribou. Up they went, directly toward the main trail ambush location, directly toward where the other bow hunter was scrambling into position. You may wish to take note of landmarks. We'll be looking at this exact gully again shortly. From his high vantage point, McGuire could film another group of caribou crossing a small island, preparing to swim toward the ridge. While he was zoomed in on the island, McGuire suddenly heard clattering rock and became aware of fast activity in the first group of caribou. Apparently they had climbed up the ridge before the bow hunter was ready, and they had come down the draw a lot faster than they'd gone up. The group was now milling around about 20 yards beyond the outlet to the main trail. After spooking the caribou, the bow hunter immediately grabbed his gear and followed the animals down to the far trail. Swimming caribou would tend to emerge from the fast current somewhere near the center of the ridge base, then follow the scent trail of the animals just before them. In the event that a caribou was alarmed and ran off in a new direction, that single animal could, for a time, change the direction of an entire migration. Here again, the lead caribou is referencing ground scent. It amazed McGuire that whenever a caribou approached the exact spot where another caribou had been previously alarmed, perhaps from a hunting incident a half hour earlier, the second animal would immediately get nervous or alarmed and often trot away along the exact fright trail of the first caribou. Human scent whether airborne or on the ground, would always send the caribou crashing away. And if detected by swimming animals, the smell of a human might result in a complete turnaround. There was a constant danger that swimming animals might reverse the migration flow if they returned to the far shore. Listen to the soundtrack as Bob McGuire whispers into the microphone. This cow and calf had now encountered the alarm scent trail from the caribou McGuire had filmed earlier. I not see where the alarm, but they weren't about to make a mistake. They wanted no part of that old trail up over the ridge. Instead, they followed the route taken by the earlier alarmed animals. 
And the big one's still following. And the big one still takes the general trend, kind of in the middle, following the leaders. The leaders are young ones, or cows. And bulls are cows, seem to be leading. All of the caribou were now headed up the shore toward the waiting bow hunter. The wind was swirling and allowed a gentle cast of human scent to reach the caribou. Oh, there's another big bull. Swimming in. Now, something's happened. Now, something's happened. See what the big bull does. The bow hunter later told McGuire that he stood up to shoot when the caribou stopped and set them off like a firecracker. Oh my goodness. Some clandestine operation. Here they come. Good golly. These animals are accustomed to ambush from above as they are common prey to wolves. Miss caribou. <coughs> It was now a foot race along the ridge as the bow hunter knew exactly where the caribou were headed. Bulls are hanging down there waiting for the other to decide. caribou were now walking directly up the gully toward the second ambush location, some 200 yards from McGuire. Listening carefully for the sounds of a distant bowstring, McGuire was certain that he was about to film a nice bull streaking back toward the water with a blood spot behind the shoulder. He's not so sure. They're in the area that the others were alarmed. Could be an alarm scent or pheromone. <laughs> Here come the others back out. Oh boy. I guess they didn't want any part of that scent trail either. And that leaves two alternatives. Either swim or come to the camera. Although McGuire initially believed that these caribou had been turned back by the previous alarm scent, the other bow hunter later reported another fouled effort as predator and prey had arrived at the ambush spot at the same instant. Goats. These caribou walked to within three yards, directly below McGuire as he recorded clicking hooves. That one keeps putting the others. The lead cow had apparently winded McGuire. They winded me.
sneaking away, these caribou were now headed for a trail around the end of the bluff. Grabbing the camera, McGuire left his bow and arrows alongside the tripod and raced toward the intercept. McGuire's calling stopped this bull long enough for close-up filming. The caribou was in an ideal position for the bow hunter. And McGuire's bow was some 100 yards away, leaning against his camera tripod. This was the capper to an exciting and successful caribou hunt, as McGuire had filmed the best kill shot of his career. Scrambling down the bank, Folkrod retrieved his pass through arrow and prepared to walk up river toward their beached boat. The trophy bull swam only a short distance before expiring. It was the easiest blood trail and recovery of the entire trip. Caribou hunters contribute much to the northern Quebec economy and are treated like royalty. Airline companies, tourist outfitters, and Canadian government officials all are geared up to provide top service, assistance, and accommodations to hunters. This filming was made possible only through the cooperative efforts of everyone involved.
This video was sponsored in part by Golden Eagle Archery.